What's up guys? So recently I put a post on Instagram asking you guys to ask me questions. And usually I'll answer these on Instagram, but uh, this time I just felt like why not do it on YouTube? It's been so long since I've done a Q&A type video like this. Not too sure if it interests or bores some of you guys, but just thought I would do it anyways and go through the questions along with my French. So I'm going to translate them from French to answer them to you. And uh, I'll try and pick the English from that as well. But thank you if you sent your question in. And if you didn't, I do these sometimes on Instagram and I will usually answer on there. So if there are some questions that you were wondering about that I maybe don't answer in this video, I'll probably take care of them on Instagram. So uh, yeah, my Instagram's gonna be on the screen now. Anyways, here we go. The first question here, actually the one on the top is, life is good at the moment and I feel really good and having you guys like around and the support and uh, you know, coming out of the whole having Corona and the support you guys showed me there, I feel really motivated and just lucky, really to just have so many people around that, uh, that help me and motivate me. So thank you for that. Complicated one. My mom is English. My dad is born French, but grew up in America. So I have an American passport as well, uh, but I grew up in France. So triple nationality. And yes, yeah, so I guess like French American from my parents, uh, but grew up in France. I feel very French because I speak French, a lot of my friends are French and I've always lived here. So when I go, um, you know, when I'm in the UK, it feels very, very homey. But for example, when I go to the States or when I'll go to Italy or Spain, um, it, it always feels very homey when I come back to France or to the UK. I really started getting that more recently with the UK. Um, but obviously growing up here, this really feels like home. When I say here, I mean South of France where I am now. So it's a really tricky one because mechanically as a car, the Scud is, is above, it's on another level compared to the R8. Just the noise, the way it feels, the, um, the you know, the Alcantara inside, the carbon fiber, the whole thing, the gearbox, that is probably the best car out of the two, the one I connect with the most whilst driving it. But emotionally, the R8, it kind of like representing, you know, a thank you for subscribers and even beyond that, like to anyone who's, who's kind of like shown support over the years, emotionally, like that car is so special to me and I would really struggle to separate myself from it. So as a car, I prefer the Scud, but right now, like gun to the head, if I had to um, sell one of them, it would be the Scuderia, I imagine, which might surprise some people actually. I am 23 years old, but I still feel about 14 <laughs> and look about 13. No, I don't have a girlfriend. Can we put my phone number in the description of this video? <laughs> my Instagram's conveniently gonna pop on the screen right about now. No, I'm joking with you guys. I, no, I, I, I have been in relationships, now I'm not. and. Um, I've just really been growing um, a business that I've been working on for a while and uh, really kind of just focusing on myself and on that and uh, just really happy at the moment uh, with that. No go. So I just did the yellow accents and the Ferrari actually has a PPF but so I don't think I'm going to wrap the Ferrari because uh, one I just I'm in love with the way that car looks and the spec of it. It's the original spec I really wanted to keep that kind of the original look and everything I've done to it. Uh, can come off easily. I know a, a rap would as well, but still, I'm, I'm, I just love it the way it is. You know, Grigio Silverstone, uh, really cool color. It's an Italian car. You know, I'm British, my mom's British, it's Grigio Sil Silverstone, so that kind of is, I like that as well, it's kind of cool. So, no, I can't see myself uh, rapping that car anytime soon. I mean, logically, I would say the Ford GT would be the next car because there are no other plans before then, but you never know. You never know. It actually leads me into the next question I found here, which was... No, none of them, neither are for sale, but everything's always kind of for sale, if that makes sense. Like, if a really good offer comes through the door, you know, I'm not going to lie, I would, if it was a really good offer, I would probably accept it on one of the cars. Um, there was a good offer recently on the Scud, but not like good enough to let it go so everything's always for sale everything always has a price is my way of thinking of it you can't get too attached to material objects um, and if a good opportunity comes through the door that will allow you to open more doors off the back of it you might as well take it so no cars are for sale but as i say if something happens spontaneously i mean you guys will be the first to know but then maybe something would happen maybe that would mean a car change before the ford gt but logically uh, the next thing to, to really change would be the Ford GT. Next road trip at the moment is so hard to predict. 
Um, if I do a road trip, I really want it to be now. You know, I've, I've done a lot of road trips with either other YouTubers or different brands or just with friends, and I love them, but I feel like I've explored, you know, quite a bit of you. And now if I do a road trip, I'd really like it to be to meet people who are watching the videos and kind of get to know people who are following my Instagram or anything like that, and to really, you know, kind of dig deeper in that aspect. And to do that, uh, I just, I don't want to put anyone else at risk or myself at risk or any other one that would be traveling with me at risk. So it doesn't feel like the right climate right now. I'd probably take the R8 for it, because uh, one, it's less mileage sensitive the scud two it's more comfortable and three like it's it's you know as i said it's the thank you car so um yeah i would probably want to take that car and it still needs to have its rims put on the exhaust tips and the steering wheel which should be happening soon that's going to be one of the next videos I, i'm meant to drop it off tomorrow at the garage so fingers crossed that will be the next video where you guys can see the rims um and uh, yeah so once that's done, once everything's all cleared up, then I really want to do a road trip and I really want to be able to kind of share that literally directly with uh, people who are following. I get asked this quite a bit. I'm not particularly, I'm, I'm, as you can tell, I'm just not a <laughs> big guy in general. So many people often will say, you have the physique of a racing driver. That's just a way of saying you're short in a nice way. Now I'm, I'm one meter 74, 75. So I guess that's not actually too small. Uh, I did the IB, the International Baccalaureate. <laughs> I had, you take six subjects when you do the IB. I had uh, English, Langlet, Economics, and Design Technology, which was an interesting one, as higher levels. French B Standard, which is a little bit cheeky. Uh, math Studies, it's called, which is like the lowest level of maths. And uh, Peace and Conflict, which is basically history. Did okay, I mean, I didn't have an outrageously good grade and I didn't have a bad grade. Did okay there. Went to uni, loved uni. I went to IE in Spain, loved the, the teachers, you know, loved the social life, met some great people, some of my best friends today. I there started up a business with some of my best friends. I was only there for four months. But in the end, I really wanted to get experience like out in the real world first before coming back to uni. So I went to do that and then I never quite made it back to uni. Yet, who knows what will happen in the future. And you know, I was like, I wanted to just, that was that was how I work. I think different people work in different ways and that was just, that fit me better uh, going about that route. But I still think that having a, a uni degree is really important and I would love to have one again one day. And it's just, it's one of those things that can never be a bad thing. So if you don't know exactly what you want to do, if you have, if you're lucky enough to be able to go to uni because it is a huge luxury, you need to make the most of that opportunity. I think I might do another video about this because this comes up so much. I feel like I've spoken about it a lot, but I feel like it comes up quite a bit. There's right now, I, the way I see it is there's kind of three facades to what I'm doing on, on, a, on a weekly or daily basis. There's YouTube and obviously some work that comes through there, mainly through my French channel now um, because that generates more views and therefore more advertisement potential for brands. So uh, there's YouTube, that whole side of things. So whether that's from AdSense and brands, but it's mainly like where the biggest financial uh, rewards come from are, for, are from brands these days. Then I have a, a, a marketing agency, a digital agency, um, and that's where we will take care for, for both brands and for individuals, so like athletes or celebrities, we'll take care of uh, anything digital um, to market who they are, or what they are as a company. So we'll take care of the Instagrams, but we'll you know create websites and put together marketing campaigns, things like that. And then I have a company that allows people who play a game on it uh, to win prizes. So anywhere from like a MacBook to a holiday to just cash. Um, and those, those are the three main things that that I'm doing these days and um, so yeah it's fairly busy but I really like it and we built a really good team around us and uh, I'm excited to kind of move those all forward but I feel like that could be a whole video kind of talking about those things I had four cars that were like on my wall when I was at uh, school. Pagani Zonda, and the reason I'm so obsessed with Pagani's as well is uh, when I was young, uh, my dad used to travel a lot for, for work, and like we spent a lot of time together, obviously, and we, we've always been really, really close, but we didn't have too much like proper, proper one-on-one -on -one type time. And one of the f most like memorable trips that I've had in my whole life, honestly, was going to uh, the valley of supercars, you know, like Modena, where you got Marinello, you got uh, Sant'Agata Bolognese or whatever, <laughs> where Lamborghini is, you got um, Pagani, and we went there and we visited all those places. And I was, you know, 12, 13 years old. And we went, the two of us, we drove up there. It was so much fun. And the f uh, one of the first places we went was Pagani, and it just blew my mind. Those cars, the story behind Horatio, um, you know, how he, you know, basically arrived with nothing um, in this valley of supercars 
and has made you know arguably one of the, the most recognizable names uh, in in the industry. So um, yeah, he really really inspired me. And since that day, because of the emotional side of going on that trip with my dad, seeing those cars, like the whole thing has just been like that is the holy grail. And I don't think anyone or anything or any car will ever really replace that for me. And it really drives me. And with the tricky thing is they've just been, you know, the more I, I grow and the, the more maybe, you know, I've been able financially to kind of like chase that dream, even though I'm miles away from that, the more the, the cost of Pagani's have grown. So when they came out, you know, they were 200,000 pounds, which is a ton of money. But, you know, if you really, really, really work hard for, it, for many years, you, you can get that. Um, now they're like 4 million. So that dream is just, kind of always been slowly you know as i've gone that's gone and that gap's kind of even gotten even bigger but um yeah i mean hopefully when they took that i had that on my wall then i had i had a ferrari 430 because that was the car that came out back then and a lamborghini aventador because that was just yeah i mean i still think is one of the greatest supercar designs of all time and then an audi r8 which i also think is one of the best supercar designs of all time um and it's so surreal that now so the 430 and the r8 have actually ended up uh, uh, being able to own um the aventador is still a dream car of mine and hopefully one day i'll be lucky enough to own one of those and the pagani is a whole different kettle of fish but who knows one day i find it really really motivating though uh, and inspiring to have kind of like something that drives you and pushes you so much. Um, so that's why, you know, whenever I answer that question, I've always just said, oh, Pagani is my favorite car, Pagani is my favorite car, but I've never really gone into why. Today felt like the right time. Shall we end on that? Guys, thank you for watching. Um, as I say, I do these on Instagram from time to time, so if it does interest you, um, yeah, I do these sometimes on Instagram, sometimes in French, sometimes in English. But uh, yeah, really appreciate your support, you guys sending in your questions, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.